Okay, for number one, we will need to plug in four in or negative four into the top function because that would be where we would have this inequality to be true. And so we will substitute in negative four raised to the third power minus one. So that's going to be negative 64 minus one. So we get negative 65. Okay, plugging into the next one. Notice this is negative two and that's where we have our or equal to here. So we're going to have three times negative two plus five. So that's going to give us negative six plus five or negative one. Moving on to number two, again, same process. We're substituting in negative seven and notice that's gonna fall here. So I'm gonna sub in and that negative is on the outside. This negative here is that negative and then substituting in negative seven squared plus seven. So the inside is positive 49. However, this negative out here makes that negative 49 plus seven, so that is gonna give us negative 42. And then G at four, four is gonna fall somewhere between negative seven and positive five. So I need to sub in there, and I'm gonna have the square root of three times four, which is 12 plus 15. So that's gonna be the square root of 27, and that's gonna reduce down to be three times the square root of three. Okay, for our next part, a, 3a, we're going to sub in negative 1.2, and negative 1.2 would fall into that top part. So we have the greatest integer of 3 times negative 1.2, and so we're going to have that greatest integer of negative 3.6. In other words, I need to know what is the integer closest to this without being larger than, so that is going to be negative 4. To sub in 2, that's going to be this bottom function, so I have the absolute value of 2 minus 4 plus 5. That's going to be the absolute value of negative 2 plus 5, and that will give us 7. Moving on to number four, we are going to sub in negative five, and it looks like here, this one, there's the or equal to, so we're gonna have to plug in there, and we have negative five all squared minus five times negative five, so we're gonna have positive 25 minus a negative 25, and remember, minus a negative is plus a positive, and that will give us 50. And then 8 fifteenths, 8 fifteenths is less than one, but also bigger than zero. So we're gonna sub into here. And so we have three halves times eight over 15 plus seven. And we can do some cross canceling here. And two will go into eight four times. So I have four over five plus seven, and I'm gonna treat that as seven over one. And so whenever we add those together, I'm gonna to get 39 over five, and that's coming from here. Remember that one needs to be five, and five times seven is 35. So that's where your 39 fifths comes from. Okay, and graphing our piecewise function, we do need to start out with reminding ourselves that we have this border here at three. So we can count over to three and remind ourselves we've got a good border here. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug in a three to get us started. So if we plug in a three, that's gonna give us negative nine over two, which we can change that over to be three and then negative four and a half. That way it makes it a lot easier for us to graph. And that will be open circle. So let's go over three and then down four and a half and make our open circle. And now we can use our transformations. Notice this parent function x squared has not been moved from the origin. We do have a negative, so we know that's upside down. 
So here we know this graph is going to look something like this on each side. And of course we can't go past that open circle. So there's one side of this. And then over on the other side, again starting out in the same place here, we do need to plug in our 3. And this time that's going to give us, oops, I changed my marker. Let's fix that right quick. So we're going to have 3, and then when we plug in, we're going to have 7. So we're going to go over 3 and then up. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Have a closed circle, and we know our slope for this. This is a line. Our slope is negative 1. So we can go down 1, right 1, and count off that slope as needed and then connect those points as well. Okay, now we also need to answer these other questions. That is the domain. The domain for this one would be all real numbers. The range for this one is going to be from negative infinity all the way up to that highest point here, which is 7. And we do have a jump discontinuity at x equals 3. Very similar with this problem. Again, we do need to remind ourselves of our boundaries right here. So I am going to mark off at 3. And note that's really our starting point. We are going to substitute in 3 to see what that point would be. And we would end up with 2 over 2, which is 1. So I'm going to go over 3 and up 1 and make an open circle. Now this is our reciprocal function, and we also know that this has been moved to the right 1, and that's going to be where that new asymptote is. So we do definitely need to include that. That is part of that reciprocal function. So there's our new asymptote. And then the rest of this hasn't changed any flipping or anything. So we can go ahead and sketch on each side of this what that reciprocal function is supposed to be looking like. And again, we could choose x to be 0. If you wanted an anchor point here, if x is 0, then that tells me that y is going to be a negative 2. So we can tell where that's going to cross. Is that 0, negative 2? So that might help us see a little bit better of where to cross and run that parallel to the x-axis. Now we need to get the other portion of the graph. And then that portion here, we are still going to start out with substituting in a 3. And when we plug that in, we do have 2 thirds times 3, and I'm going to put that over 1 so we know our numerator and denominator, keep those separate. That's going to give us a negative 2. So we have 3 and then negative 2. So go over 3, down 1, 2, and make our closed circle. And then from there we can count off our slope. Our slope for this one is 2 thirds, so we're going to rise 2 and run 3, and there's our other point, and we can connect those. Now answering the questions about this, here the domain, it looks like we're going to have all real numbers except, and keep in mind we do have that vertical asymptote there, so we're going to have everything except positive 1. And then our range, that's going to contain everything. And then we do have a couple of discontinuities. When we have an infinite at x equals 1, and then we also have a, a jump discontinuity at x equals 3. Okay, with question 7, um, notice that we have three parts here. So we need to divide up all of those x values between negative 2 and positive 2. So again, I'm going to put us a border here at negative 2 
and over here at positive 2. So we know we have this divided up. And starting out with the first part, we do need to sub in negative 2 to see where we're going to start. And so let's see, if we plug in negative 2 here, that's going to give us positive 2. And then 2 times 3 is going to be 6. So I know at negative 2, positive 6, I have a closed circle there. And then do keep in mind that we have been shifted over to the left 4. So we can move that over 4, 2, 3, 4. And it did not move up or down any. So I know the vertex to that V is sitting there. And we can go ahead and connect those. Now, if you want another point on that other side, you're welcome to substitute one in. But there's going to be that part of the graph. Now, let's look between our two borders. And notice that we have a negative 2. And that's going to be between negative 2 and positive 2. So down here at negative 2, and notice we have an open circle on one side, closed circle, Nope, open circle on the other side too. And that is just a horizontal line between the two. And then we're gonna have our x squared minus 11. And so let's go ahead and plug in our two there. And if we plug in a two, we're gonna have two squared minus 11. So four minus 11 or negative seven. So we're gonna go over 2 and then down 7 two, three. and we have that point there and that is a closed circle and then with that let's see I know the vertex is down here at 0 negative 11 so it is way on down below there so it's sitting down here somewhere and so our parabola shape and this is turned upward so it's going to come up through here something like this. So there's your parabola. And again, you can add an anchor point there if you want to, but it's not necessary. Now let's talk about our domain and range for this. Our domain here, notice it looks like we're going to have all numbers going on there. Yep, that should be all real numbers. Our range looks like the lowest point was down here at negative 7. So we're going to have from negative 7 to positive infinity. And then we have a couple of jump discontinuities here. We have a jump at, and it looks like at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. For this problem, we have two separate borders again. We have one border at negative 4. And then we've got another border over here at positive 1. So we'll move that over there to positive 1. And so looking over here, we do need to substitute in our negative 4. And so let's see if we plug in negative 4, we're going to get, uh, let's see, negative 1, then positive 1, square root of that is 1. So I have negative 4, 1, and that is an open circle. And then keep in mind what this should look like. This has been moved to the left 3 and reflected. So it looks like this is going to be flipped around and going something like this. Okay, now between our two function or our two borders, sorry, we have this absolute value function. And so let's go ahead and plug in our negative 4. If we do that, we have negative 8, negative 8, then positive 8, minus 7. So we're at negative 4, 1 again. So negative 4, 1. And that's, again, open circle there. And then if we plug in a 1, we're going to have a negative 5. So we're going to go over here at 1 and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, and that is also an open circle. Now think about your transformation. That is gonna be a V, and it has been moved down seven, six, and seven. So there's the vertex. And so we know that's going to be a V shape. So there's going to be our connecting there. Oop, that was bad. Let's see if we can't connect it a little bit better. Okay. Now over on the other side, notice we do have a line, but we need to um, go ahead and substitute in our one. And when I plug in a one, it looks like we're going to get a two. And also our slope is three over one. So let's see, we're gonna go over one, up two, fill in that circle, and now let's count off our slope. You're gonna go up three and over one, and then up three and over one. So there's your line, pretty steep slope on that one. Okay, now let's count off our domain and range. Our domain, it looks like, is accounted for everywhere but right here at that four, at that negative four. So we're gonna have all reals except x cannot be equal to negative four. Our range on this one um, looks pretty broken up. Let's see, we're gonna have our range from negative seven up to positive one. So we're gonna have negative seven up to positive one, and it's not containing that one, and then union over on the other side, we're gonna have one to infinity there. In our discontinuities, we have a removable at x equals four, and then we also have a jump at x equals one. Okay, for our last problem, again, we will start out by setting up these borders. So we have a border at negative five. So we have that portion here. And then we also have a border at negative two. So let's go on over there and divide up our graph here and here. All right, so now let's look and see. For our first part, we have negative five, so let's go ahead and set in our negative five. And if we do, we're gonna end up with a positive five. So we're gonna go back five, and then up five. Oop, one, two, three, four, five, and do an open circle there. And our slope is negative, so we're going to have to stay to the left of our border. So we can go um, back one and then up one, and then back one and up one. And that should generate our line for us. Okay, and now moving to the middle portion here. That one looks strange. It's a cubic. Um, we do need to plug in. So if we plug in negative five there, we're gonna end up with negative two cubed and then plus five. So that's gonna give us a negative three. So I have negative five and then down three. And that's gonna be a closed circle. And then I also need to plug in negative two over here on the other side to see what's going on. And that's gonna give me one cubed plus five, so that's gonna give me six. So I have negative two up six. And that's a closed circle. Now be careful about just connecting these. Notice this is cubic. It's been moved to the left three and up five. So we've gotta go left three from the origin here. One, two, three and then up five. And so there's kind of that point of inflection where we're kind of changing our concavity but not the direction of it. So here our function, when we connect it, is gonna have a little bit of a turn there. 
Okay, and so now let's look over to the greatest integer. Now, whenever we're plugging these in, it's going to look strange. Um, if we do plug in here that greatest integer with negative 2, keep in mind that is 2 times that greatest integer of negative 2 plus 1. And so for this one, as weird as it looks, the greatest integer of negative 2 is going to be is negative 2. So here that's going to give me negative 4 plus 1, so negative 3. So I have negative 2, negative 3. So I'm going to go back to and down 1, 2, 3, and we are going to contain that point. However, when we draw this, we're going to go up to that next integer with an open circle. And then we jump up one with closed and connect that with open. And the same thing again. We're going to have closed over to open and so forth. So as weird as this function looks, that's about all there is to that one. All right. So oh, it looks like I skipped one. Hang on. All right. Open. And then here we go. And then over to open. Sorry, guys. All right, so, and that one would continue all the way through. And so here, whenever we start doing our domain, that is going to be all real numbers. Our range, um, the lowest point I think I see is going to be at a negative 3. So that one is going to be from negative 3 all the way up through infinity. And our discontinuities are weird. We're going to have a jump at, and we're going to have x equals negative 5, negative 2, and then negative 1, and really every integer after that. So we're just going to put dot, dot, dot for that one.